There's been a lot of talk going around on how to fly GSF for Galactic Seasons and for Conquest. So we're going to revisit a GSF episode that we did in 2016. So I think we can re refresh that. Uh, so you can look forward to that and more on this episode of the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. Our broadcast astromech today is EPC 390. <laughs> and playing alongside me is Seema. Hey Seema, how is it going? Hey Max, I just want to like clarify, we're not actually going to play an old episode. We're, re we're revisiting it in our minds. And refreshing it and t telling, I mean, especially talking about GSF in the context of Galactic Seasons and Conquest. So yeah. Yes, yes. Um, which is, it's a really good way to get points for Conquest and Galactic Seasons. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking of those two things, that is basically what I've been doing with my SOTAR time this week. GSF? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Negative Ghost I, Rider. <laughs> but I, 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 I approve of the hope in your voice when you said that. <laughs> Never give up hope. Um, in general, rebellions are built on hope. <laughs> right, that's right. So, um, yeah, I'm about, I'm about where I thought I would be. So I, I, I'm not really planning, but I am sort of keeping an eye on where I am, like uh, on the road to the galactic seasons. And I'm at level. Let's see, where am I? Level seventy four right now, but I'm at five hundred and eighty eight points out of eight hundred points. So, wow. Ah. So you're 74. That's, that's yeah. looking good. That's late at the so, end of the tunnel. That's about when I started thinking this is manageable. Yeah. So I've been thinking, I know I said this last week, but just arithmetic wise, I, if I get about 30 points every week, then I'll just coast on out to the end. Um, and last week I got like 40 some points because we did a weekly, I got one weekly done, which I don't normally get a weekly done. So um, this week I'm like, oh, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's sort of, isn't it funny how like, I'm like 10 points ahead. So I'm like, suddenly don't have to do 30 points. Well, you know, you're going <laughs> to, right. you're going to cut it down to the wire. You're going <laughs> to, I don't know, but that's a fun yeah. game. <laughs> See, well, it is. And not only that in the end, in the end, um, when I get to the end, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, <laughs> when right. we bring it full circle, <laughs> When I, when we come to the end, the worst is hap that can happen is that I have to spend some um, cartel coins or some credits. I'll still make it to the end. So yeah, it's right. kind of like a win-win. Right. So win -win. anyway, that's my Galactic Seasons um, update. Cool. And I've sort of gotten back in a little rhythm of doing the, the sort of baseline conquest things I was doing. Like I do things like... I, I have a couple of characters that are crafters, but I don't really play them. Um, like they don't go out in the world and do quests or ops or anything. Um, so they're sitting on Odessa right now in front of like Ogrub, Dr. Ogrub or um, Hilo Viz. And they, they'll turn in those quest boxes you get for doing heroics um, until I make companion benefactor on that character. Oh, sure. That's a good, that's 16, um, 17K a, a day right, right there. So if you do that on two days in a row, then that's a conquest target for like no effort because I have hundreds of those caches. Um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll do that and then I'll do a dark project and an invasion course and then that character is done that day and then I do the next, the next day I do the same thing and... Um, then somewhere along the way, I usually I don't usually do one for every day because like the weekend, I kind of pay more attention, less attention to video games, more attention to other stuff. So I try to be done with Conquest before the weekend, but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, but yeah, so Conquest, Galactic Seasons, just still doing a little bit of leveling and all like the myriad of new characters I rolled up for Total Galactic War. Um, I also want to say here, well, let's see, I'll just put in that mfn this week we did um world bosses we we did the world boss on dome and cause because that was a galactic no that was a conquest target um and so that was a bunch of points and then we ran around the galaxy killing things and people were switching out to their characters that needed xp so rampaging i still call it rampaging even though that's not really a conquest term anymore but 
Right. We bring people uh, <clears throat> with us um, of all, basically of all levels. You just have to have a, a ship so that we can summon you. Um, so I went in, onto my, uh, it was either Shadow or Assassin. Depends on, I think we were doing Imp this week. So it was my Assassin that was almost to 75. And I think it got her to 75. So it was a productive and fun MFN. And we had some new voices, which is always fun. Um, and then tonight in our ops group, we had a super rigorous night of wiping over and over again during our progression. No, we just did <laughs> story mode KP and then we were done with it. That's yeah. why we're starting early tonight. Yes. Um, I've been plugging away at the rising storm, but I haven't finished it yet. But I want to say I did buy a 65 hour book for one credit. Um, on audible and it was like an author that i have never read before so it's like a leap of faith brandon sanderson um, <laughs> <laughs> 65 hours i mean that's yeah no not Brent, not not him that's one of his um, novellas <laughs> it was it's actually written wait it's called the cycle of iran a-r-a-w-n it actually includes three novels but it was it was on the author page for Michael J. Sullivan, who wrote Rayera Revelations. Oh, sure. And he, and he was recommending it, and he said it was a fun read. And I'm like, oh, I could use a fun read. And um, I really liked Rayera Revelations. It was like one of my favorite fantasy novels that I've read in quite a while. So I figure how bad could it be. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it can be terrible. It can be really bad. But in 65 hours, I know I won't. But anyway, I'm like, one credit, 65 hours. Such a great, if, it turn, if it works out, it's such a great deal. So I'm hopeful. But first I have to finish The Rising Storm. Yes. Yes, you do. Because <laughs> that's my job right now. Because we're going to talk um, about it next week. So that's everybody right. Should, we are going to talk about it next week, yeah. Everybody's got to finish it. So book club next week. Don't forget. So that's going to be during the summer event, the Summer of Love for AIE on the 29th. So July 29th, we're going to do the book club walkthrough of rising storm mm -hmm. and nice. there's a lot of stuff going on in that book marsh okay row. <laughs> yeah he's a bad guy did you know that he's really he's really a bad guy yeah yes yeah. yes they had to like they have to like prove it yeah look how they bad did. i am <laughs> i'm really mean yep. all right so <clears throat> leaving that topic behind how was your week, Max? It was great. Thanks for asking. I have been doing quite a few things. I've been doing a little bit of the mostly just the weekly stuff and then just goofing off because I'm done with the galactic season. So whatevs. I'm not even doing conquest. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really even care. Yeah. You know, we're, you know, we're not like trying to win a planet or anything. So I, I'm, I'm just re relaxing through that. I I am helping the guild establish our our plan and trying some things out in the beta of New World. Yeah, how's that Amazon going? Game, uh, pretty good. the 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 beta is working pretty well. You know, they're working th just through very minorest of of glitches. It seems uh, they had some the even the queues. They've started to get rid of the queues. You, they're packing tons of people in there. I mean, the, the towns and the areas and the zones are really crowded. Uh, so that they seem to be able to. I just think the technology, this is a technology showcase, I, I think is, is a big element of them implementing this. The engine, the graphics, the performance, the technology platform is just spectacular, top notch, probably one how, of the best How different <clears throat> is it from a year ago or whenever it was? Not that different, had. that's the thing. I think they bought Lumberyard, the, the platform and the technology I'm saying. The game itself um, mm -hmm. has evolved, that has changed. In fact, it's changed quite a bit. Uh, graphically, it kind of looks the same. Your characters kind of look the same. Uh, the mechanics of even how you fight, though, is a little bit different. And the, what the game is, is quite different. It started more as sort of like a clan v. clan, world v. world, war war game, almost like EVE. Take, take territory, and there was like even some building. I'm going to build up a base, and then you're going to invade it, and you're going to knock down my walls and take over my base. There's none of that anymore. Um, none of like the building and of, of that way. There is a little bit of like world v world, but it's much more PVE centric uh, these days. And they have mm -hmm. added a little bit of story and a little bit of like dungeons and 
and you know, do they world have pets? And, do they have pets? Do they have pets? I don't know. Have- there's no pets. There's only there's fishing. They're gonna have to add pets. They have a cash oh, shop, I- but the cash shop is only for cosmetics. So I'm sure they'll add pets because <laughs> that's what you put in cash shops. <clears throat> Uh, but been I mean, doing I that? knew there. I knew there was. I knew there was fishing because I'd heard about that. Yeah, the fishing. Uh, the fishing is actually good as a fishing mini game, but it's bad as I. I want a bad fishing mini game that I can just watch Netflix and just like when I hear a ding, I click my mouse button, then I have a fish. <laughs> this one, you gotta like watch the barber. You gotta click. You know, then you only have like you know like one point five seconds to to click before. Uh, my Comcast thing just disconnected. Uh, oh, no. in, in game, um, it's that time of night still, so they haven't fixed that. Um, but yeah, you have to you have to click, and then you have to like reel it in, and there's like a little re- you know reel it in mechanic, and if you reel it in too quickly, you can see the little the tension on the line. There's like a tension I- illustration that the tension starts to get too high, and if you reel it in way too quickly, then it snaps the line and the fish gets away and. Anyway, so what is there an event? I mean, like, are are the fish valuable that you do catch? Yes, yeah, they're used for a bunch of the crafting, cooking. They're used for alchemy. Uh, the ingredients that you can get from the fishing are are quite good in that way, and you can even salvage some of the items for other kinds of materials that you pull out from fishing. I uh, always ask if a game has fishing because it's it feels like kind of a watershed thing to me. Like, if they don't have fish fishing. And it's this is an imperfect rule, right? Because Swotor doesn't have fishing. But if they if they don't have fishing, that tells me it's probably like closer to a um, a Dota or a something that I don't want to play. Yeah, you're you're not an MMO if you don't have fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, kind with, of. with 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 certain with certain exceptions. Now, in a space MMO, there's other mini games that we have that that maybe sort of take take the place. Yeah. But yeah. And then the other thing I've been doing that I did want to sort of mention and show off because I put it on Twitter this week is this. Look at that. There he is. Speedy, my 3D, 3D model life live action version of Speedy. Now, I I modeled this as close as I could to my reference photos of, of Speedy in game. Uh, so it's it's modeled. It's, you know, like even the, the wrinkles and even how, you know, like like his back legs being sort of weird like that. Uh, I wouldn't, and his shell only on his back and not, you know, not like going under his, his belly. That's how he is in game. So it was modeled off of that. The textures I had to make custom, so they they are a little bit different. But I, I learned a lot and that probably took me, I was trying to, you know, probably, th- I, w- I was thinking somewhere around 30 hours to, to do this. <clears throat> I don't remember Speedy having that little white arrow jumping around on him. See, there you go. <laughs> so, so I had this view up earlier, and I had Speedy highlighted, and like the origin dot was right in it, right in his eye. And, and Seema's like, "Is that dot? Is that is that new? Is that how his eye is supposed to be?" I'm like, <laughs> what? No. I like the orange, the fiery orange eye, <laughs> as opposed to the smoky kitten eye that we were talking about earlier. Uh, no, that is not how his eye is supposed to be. I even had to make the sand. Look, I, so I, this is all procedurally textured sand, so I could do the, the shot. I put an HDRI so I could do the lighting and the background. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so I sculpted Speedy. Uh, if I was going to rig it so he could be animated, it would probably take me literally probably, probably another 20 hours uh Probably another 20 hours because there's less of learning involved with the rigging that I would need to get into in the animation. And just the next step of this is a super high poly count model. You can't you can't paint and you can't rig and you can't animate a high poly model. So if I if I like click click into this model and go into the to the polygon view, these these are the polygons is a super, super high poly count model so that this would never work um, in that way. <clears throat> but this is what I did. Here's, so, a lot of, here's my Speedy. Uh, is it are you in back backing? Here's Speedy. Yeah, see. Here, let me get out of my get out of my 
Let me turn my camera around. See? So there's there's Speedy. See his 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 legs are weird and how they're just sort of like tucked yeah, jammed up his back yeah. legs and his shell only goes yeah. over the top and his he's got that's these what, that's angles what I like and about wrinkles. Him. Yeah. Um so then my my picture of Speedy, that's what he is. That's what we got. So there you go. That's what I've been doing. Wow, we had a long intro today. Let's get into some news so then we can get to GSF. Now, an Imperial News Network report. First up in the news, PvP Season 14 payouts. There's a post up there which sort of describes in detail what's going on with getting your rewards from Season 14, if you're one of those people that does get rewards. There's both a post talking about being able to uh, get, get your rewards on time and that a lot of people uh, did want to be able to ensure that they were going to be able to buy the replica rewards from previous seasons uh, between now and the start of season 15. And yes, that is the case. That's clarified in the dev tracker as well. So there you go. Also in news, the PTS came down today and that was the PTS where you could go and play with the guardian stuff. Yes. Uh, and they made, they made a note that the next high level look was going to be Sentinel. Yes. So they're targeting next week. It's another class I don't play that often. When are yeah, you doing I, mercenary? I, I don't play my Sentinels that often, but I play them way more often than my Guardians. So True. We'll True. See. So there's that. Also in the news, uh, there was some additional Jedi Guardian feedback notes from uh, Jackie, but uh, relayed through Jackie from the, the dev team as well. Uh, some clarification. So this came after our show last week. It came on Friday. It clarified in detail uh, what, why have they made some of these changes. People were sort of concerned and confused, reducing the number of defensive cooldowns. Why did you do that? Uh, so they, they made a couple key points in here around their philosophy of what they're trying to do. As we were sort of saying on the side, it probably would have been good to hear this before or as we're going into the PTS to prepare people so that they could see what they're what they're getting into uh, might have reduced some of the confusion and angst. But this this was a great post to see that that philosophy to get laid out. So reducing the number of defensive cooldowns, yet making the defensive cooldowns that you have more balanced and more effective uh, so that that you're 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 not only focused on that and some more defense is, is built into some of the other abilities. OK, seems reasonable to me. I know right. a lot of guardians were still saying they want all of their defensive cooldowns. If I'm a, if I'm a tank, defensive cooldowns are sort of like my rotation. That's that's what that's my kit. So they're going to have to balance the, against that. I, I can see that point uh, if taking away defensive cooldowns so what you're dpsing more as a, as a tank uh, it seems a little bit weird the other thing they said is streamlining abilities and this feeds into this a bit streamlining abilities where you might have like right now two button presses that basically combine to make one effect like your you know your your your, your ability sets up another ability and that's the only reason you're using it collapsing those into a single ability is is a design objective to to reduce some of that weirdness of how some of those rotations work as well we'll see how that plays out because again people like all of their abilities um, right so when we were talking about this last week i made the comment that i felt like um we had room for one more ability and we didn't have to like lose abilities for that reason but i hadn't really thought about it until i read this post which is that Having all those abilities also makes it hard to um, craft PVE encounters because I have to take them all into every version of them and every class into effect. So it, I do see an advantage to a little bit of streamlining. Yeah, I do as well. My concern, though, is they're going to have to retool so much of the game, so much of the encounters, all the flashpoints, all the operations, everything that's currently in the game, if if right. they make some of the kinds of changes that they're talking about in terms right. of 
of balance of rotation and abilities and the way abilities work together. And, it, and especially with this, this last part, which is, yeah, they off, off the PTS, we, we saw that it was missing and we were wondering maybe they just forgot about it or they, they left it out on accident, but the stun breaker and the interrupt resolute and force kick, those were left out. And they said, um, Oh yeah. You know, we, we, we understand that players may be worried about what that means. It was never our intention to completely remove them from the game. We realized it caused confusion. So we're going to add these back in, but they may change form in the future. We may implement them in a different way, or they, we may, we're currently iterating on different ways of utilizing breaker functionality that doesn't necessarily require an independent icon on your hotbar, as well as considering where interrupts fit in with the overall class and encounter design of 7.0. Again, that sounds daunting. That's ominous to me. Yeah, that sounds om ominous to me. And also, one of the things that they're, that I worry about is, and I know a lot of people just jump to this too, when they say things like, when you have so many defensive, it makes PvP tedious. I, I, it, it makes me worry for PvE because like you said, it's not making PvE tedious. Right. For a tank to be able to tank. So. And, you know, and I've, I've seen some of the PvP comments. Time to kill is not that long in, in PvP p today. Really? Um, okay. I mean, it's, well, I don't know. I don't do ranked. So I, I guess and, I, and, I can't speak. And people who say that, maybe they're comparing it to like uh, League of Legends or some other like genre game. Maybe they are. Uh, or Call of du or Call of Duty, where you just like shoot them in the head. Yeah, maybe maybe they are. And but then I would I say know. go play those games. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I. <laughs> but isn't yeah. fair of me, but. Right. But it, in if a way, you want to balance but... PvP. You know, a completely balanced, you know, complete, you know, completely vanilla, same kit. Everybody's got the same kit and, and equipment and progression. That's what those games are designed around. That's that's all they do. So, yes, they're going to do it better than an MMO, which has, you know, gear levels and, you know, and, and PvE abilities and. Right. And global cooldowns. Yeah. And tab targeting. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a different animal. And t healers and tanks and DPS and. Yeah. Oh, my. So. Right. I've, that's I've what never... I always think been a fan of forcing or striving for perfect balance in in pvp in an mmo i've never yeah been a fan of that no i i agree but more and to if come they made, if, if they made pvp more like gsf where you can do it at level one well that's that's what and, they would have to do and that's what some games have done which is right you you basically get a naked character in PVP with only PVP abilities and only PVP gear that you get in a PVP mm -hmm. isolated PVP chamber. But you still what have MMO that? style combat, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I, but, and it, that's, but e I, that's but, easier to balance, but even that's right. not going to be. But perfect. what I always think of when they, when they talk about that kind of model is if you don't have to get gear over time and you're not progressing your character, then why don't you go play Heroes of the Storm or Overwatch? Right. Exactly. I I agree. That's right. You heard SEMA. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cold. Right. And I want you guys to all stay and play with us, but yeah. Yeah. But they're not playing with us anyway. They they wouldn't want us <laughs> to play with them. Right. Because poor, poor Thon they, got got. They told us not to queue. Got beat up on when he went into a went into a a uh, ranked match again. Um, so that's okay. that. So that's that. So moving on to something else, there was another one of those behind the scenes look type um, interview articles on on Swotor.com this week. And it was an interview with Ashley Rule, who's the lead cinematic designer. And that was really interesting. Uh, I think they're getting really they're starting to get really good at these articles. And I really felt reading this article that it gave me a view of what it's like to be a quote, a quote cinematic designer. Cause she's, um, you know, she's taking the encounter and the fighting into, a, uh, account the characters, not only the characters in the scene, but our characters. And she made comments that like the, the tallest male model is a lot taller than the shortest female model. And they have to have their camera angles adjust for that. Um, which explains to me why there's one scene in, is it SLS or Black Talon that has the 
diplomat in it that you have to save or kill. There's one scene where she walks in and she's just her head is just barely showing above the bottom <laughs> of the screen. <laughs> she looks really tiny. Whereas I've um, had some of my cutscenes where my head's been cut off. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, those are early cutscenes, and she was talking about the like the changes they've made during the year. Now yeah. they can they can have some. There's some ways they can have different camera shot, different camera views for different sizes of groups and models, and um, they can they can move the background around. Um, yeah, it was it's an interesting read. So yeah, yeah, I would, I, it, and it's a short read, so it's not not a big time investment, but it's interesting, and so I I recommend. Oh, I I, re I really liked it, and I agree. It was it's a great read. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of again in, in blender here in the animation and the same, same sort of concept. If you want to sort of, you know, create a video, putting the camera on a path and moving the camera around while, while a model is doing something, all of those kinds of things are built into this system as well. I was really starting to understand some of the things she was talking about from that perspective, because I've tried some of them out myself with, with blender. That's super cool. Uh, and then finally, in the general news, uh, nightlife is going to end someday. <laughs> I put it in the note here. I wanted, I expected Simo was going to fill it in. I have nightlife ends in XXX days. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when that is. It's sometime in August. I'm pretty sure. You're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. Nightlife will end at some point. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not ended yet. I don't have a Rodian yet. I'm afraid. No, I'm afraid to go. I, f I feel like I should just not go to the casinos so I can still go whine about not having a Rodian after this. So one of the, one of our ops teams nights sent me a screenshot of of like twelve people all with their Rodians out on on Nar Shaddaa and sent that to me during the week. So that was uh, hilarious. Thanks, guys. In guild and community news. <clears throat> Our guild event week, it's called Summer of Love. It is starting uh, a week. It's starting this Sunday. So if you're listening to this podcast, it is potentially starting the, the couple days after or maybe while, you, while you're listening to this. So the 25th, the evening of the 25th at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, we are going to have a guild town hall to kick off the week. Then it's game events in our various MMOs across all the MMOs throughout the week. There's a schedule up on aie-guild.org. There's a post that has an updated schedule. We're going to continue to update it. Sunday night, though, I will be hosting the Guild Town Hall for our, 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 our entire guild, and we'll, we'll all be there. We'll be talking about the week. We'll be talking you know, a little bit about updated of, of, all our, of all of our divisions. I will be showing you know some illustrations and some notes on screen. It'll be live in Discord, but more excitingly, it will also be live in our virtual guild town hall in Altspace VR. So I'm excited about that. Altspace.vr or altvr.com. You can go on there. Uh, you can download the client, either a, a, a client for a full VR headset, um, or what most of us, I expect most of us will do, is just get the the, the 2D, the, the, the windowed client for... PC or laptop, you make a little avatar. I've got a code in there on the blog post and in Discord, and you can get into the AIE Virtual Town Hall VR world. And we've got some stuff set up there in there, and we're gonna have the the, the presentations gonna be projected on a big theater screen, and there's voice chat in there. So after the the town hall presentation, people can just sort of hang out and chat in there. Load it up, be ready, have your avatar ready to go, 7 p.m. on Sunday, be there, because if nobody shows up, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> yeah, that would make us very sad. Tomorrow night, if you're listening live, and hopefully when we get this out, you'll have still have an hour or two to, to get ready for it. Tomorrow night is a mega, uh, monthly epic guild activity with Marcus, and he has pod racing planned on Tatooine. Never been heard of before. This is a new concept. Who would ever think to do pod racing on Tatooine? It's 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 sort of a novel concept. I wonder <laughs> if if thousands of years from now in the in the Star Wars galaxy uh, cinematic universe, if they'll still be doing uh, pod racing on Tatooine. Uh, spoiler: They will. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be a little bit of a pod race around Tatooine. Get your pod racers ready, and you can try spinning. That's a good trick. 
Uh, finally, shout out to the chat room. I know we started a little bit early tonight. We we left left some of you, but we are going along. I know this is going to be a long podcast anyway. So uh, and we'll we'll be a, we'll have a little bit of extra time uh, with you after the show in the uh, in the chat room as well. So thanks for coming and hanging out. But now it is time. You know, Seema, I I feel I feel the need. <laughs> oh my god the need for speed Tower this is Max and Seema requesting a flyby negative Ghost Rider the pattern is full no no Max? this is not a good idea sorry Seema but it's time to buzz the tower <laughs> I don't one know day I will watch that movie I don't no, know when I made I, ma I made that at, at some point. I know. I remember it was quite a while back. <laughs> well, we did. I think our last GSF, our our last GSF like tips and tricks, how to fly GSF episode was episode one sixty four or something like that. I was looking it up this week because people have been asking questions about GSF, and somebody asked. I think they asked on a YouTube comment. Even someone asked, and I had to look it up. It's twenty sixteen. <laughs> Is when <laughs> is when that happened. So it's been a little while. So here we are, episode 390. We're going to talk about GSF. Very focused on conquest and galactic seasons, but also really focused on getting started in GSF. And if you've never flown it before, what you should do. What you should do on a character, if it's a level one character and you just want to get started in GSF, how to get started quickly. So a little bit of a jump start as, as far as that goes. We are here on the fleet, fun place to, to come and visit. You don't ever have to visit this to, to do GSF, but it is kind of cool. If you go to the fleet elevators and you go to the Starfighter launch deck, uh, this is the GSF launch deck. And you can see all of the models of the GSF ships around. There's the PVP console where you can pick up the, the GSF dailies. Uh, it is a cool place. The KDY, the... Uh, the KDY Shipyards uh, Flashpoint. This is actually the place where that starts. That's what this this doorway is in the back here. Uh, but it's it's pretty cool. You don't need to be here to pick up missions, but I do re recommend. So it's, so step one: if you're gonna fly GSF, if you're gonna fly it either for Galactic Seasons or for Conquest, pick up the pick up the dailies. The first quest. It, I think you might have to get to level ten to pick it up. But the first quest you pick up off the terminal before you've ever done any on a character is Introduction to Galactic Starfighter. That's a very important quest. You're going to want to pick it up before you ever fly your first match. Um, so get get to level 10. You get a kick out of out of Yavin and pick, make sure you pick up that, that quest. Uh, you might even be able to pick it up at level 1. I meant to check it. I'm not sure, but somebody can confirm. What you get... So if we look on a, on my my hangar screen here, you get twenty five thousand fleet requisition for flying that that quest for flying any GSF match. You don't need to to win. You don't even need to be able to shoot anything. Um, you will get twenty five thousand fleet requisition for completing introduction to Galactic Starfighter. That is quite useful, and that is enough. And I I started to classify my characters into their ranking of what their ships were. You know, they were like S class for for superior and A class, B class, C class, and you know, and NA or or whatever. Any any character, if there's only very few characters that don't fall into this category, but any character where I've flown introduction to Galactic Starfighter and got twenty five thousand uh, credits, in my ranking automatically gets you to B class. Flying that one, because here's what fleet requisition is. Fleet requisition is the GSF currency, so it's separate. You can't spend credits in GSF. You can't, there's, you know, you're not spending any you know, renown or any of that kind of thing. You're spending ship requisition and fleet requisition. Fleet requisition is more valuable. This is the currency that you pay and use to unlock ships. You can't use ship requisition for that. Uh, this is the currency that you would use to unlock uh, some of the companions, which give you some extra abilities, your co-pilot. What I use it for when I fly a, 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 a 
a person for the first time that has nothing on it is I will unlock two additional ships beyond the, the ships that I get. I don't like the the scout that they give me, and I don't like the bomber that, that they give you uh, just straight out of the gate. You may get a different mix of ships depending on if you're free to play versus preferred versus subscribed. Uh, I, ha I get four ships unlocked. They're not my favorite four ships. Uh, the strike fighter is, is currently is, is fine, and the gunship are fine. So my strike fighter, I fly the, the quell on the imperial side, and I fly the mangler as the gunship on the imperial side. Those are great. Those are, those are just fine. In fact, I, those are my preferred strike fighter and a gunship. I prefer the sting for the scout, and the for the bomber, I prefer the legion. And I'll get into it to why in a bit. But it doesn't matter. You you can if you've got some favorite ships, you can you can use them. If you don't have favorite ships, fine. Just just look at the ships there. Or as you get as you get some favorite ships, you might you may change and unlock a ship. I prefer to first unlock ships because then as you complete the dailies and weeklies, you get tokens for ship requisition, and that applies to all ships you currently have unlocked. Ship requisition is the main currency you want to use when you go into and start outfitting your ships. So here we are in the in the window. I have my ships down here at the bottom, and these can be moved around. This is a pro tip that a lot of people don't realize right out of the gate. Um, you could have other ships in here. I only put the four ships that I'm that I'm flying uh, ever on my on my little bar. Uh, you you don't have to though. You could uh, you could fill up all five. You could just have one. Uh, I like to only put four, even though I have many more than four ships on some of my characters. Uh, I feel like those are the four I want to fly. It's one of each class of ship. That's what I fly. When you click on a ship, then you get the loadout for that ship. And here I've got my components. So I go to my components tab across the top here. First tab is the ships. Second tab is the components. The components are your gear for your ship. This is what you can use ship requisition to swap out and change. If you have zero ship requisition, which is what you'll have after, you know, when, you, when you're first starting, you can use a little bit of fleet requisition instead. I would recommend saving, you know, at least probably, you know, six to 9,000 of your fleet requisition for maybe a co-pilot and a couple ships. But then you've got potentially another 15K of fleet requisition that you might as well spend on outfitting the ship how you want it. You might not, for right out of the gate, you might not know what that is. I'm gonna give you some tips and guides and places you could look up some basic builds. I'm gonna show you here kind of what, what I like and, and the way I play, but this is what I do because I know I know what I want. I, on my scout, I want cluster missiles and the burst laser cannon. Uh, I want uh, dis distortion field, and I like retro th thrusters for my engine thrusters. So these are the classes of of like equipment um, for your major components. That's like your guns and your 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 shield. Your engines are basically like: Do you want to do a barrel roll to escape, or do you want to do you do the, the the left turn and dive, or your your ship does he flips does a U turn and jets on out of there? Uh, that's kind of important. I like to have either two things on my ships. I either use either barrel roll or retro thrusters, but never any of the other ones. Because if you don't have that, like in your muscle memory, and you, as I do this all the time, where I like start a new character, and it's got like Kjorgren turn or whatever the other one is called, that which like takes a left turn. Yeah. Kjorgren turn. It like turns left and like rockets on out of there. If I forget that I've got that on and I hit that button, I'm going to hit an asteroid. <laughs> so that, that's why I, I, I make sure I have the ones that I'm used to. Second set of components are your minor components. Uh, they're basically more like passives that affect how your ship performs, how your armor performs, uh, how, how far away you can see other ships. Uh, does your shields regenerate quicker or do they, are they a little bit bigger? That, that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's sort of, you can sort of think of that as passives. So what you get to do 
if you if you look at any of the guides, uh, you can go to Volk's site, for example. Volk has a nice layout that says, here's a good ship to fly as a scout. Here's what I recommend in how to outfit that scout. If you sort of make a couple notes on the side, okay, my scout, I can have cluster missiles, and they say burst laser cannon is good. Then you can go to Volk, and you can make sure you get those weapons loaded out. You spend your fleet requisition to do that. Um, and then any leftover you have after you outfit, you, you get the right weapons on your ships. Then this next little tree, it's only a five-tiered tree for each of these major components. Then you spend some points. I wouldn't go any more than the first two because it starts to get really expensive and you'll just spend ship requisition on it. But you could, you know, you could do like the tier one increased damage for your preferred uh, laser cannons or whatever. So you can even get a little bit, you know, a little bit of upgrades. So again, you're flying one mission. You're getting a whole bunch of currency that outfits your ships in kind of a really, a really good way. Um, advanced things that you can start thinking about and looking up in the, in the guides are uh, sort of advanced ways to outfit the components. Uh, as, as you look at your components here, you can see I picked, um, I picked increased ranged and double volley because that gives me a little bit more uh, range on my missiles and um, a little bit more damage output. Uh, you don't have to do that way. There, there could be reasons to go this other way. So again, that's a more advanced. You could get into the build of, of what you might want to pick there. Another slightly more advanced topic is who your crew are. Your co-pilot gives you one ability on your bar and the rest of them are sort of more passives. Uh, that's again, in a little bit more advanced topic of who you might pick as your co-pilot and who you would pick as your offensive, defensive, tactical and engineering crew. And then they give you some passives that change the way your ship performs. Not a big deal there. Get the ships you want to fly, get the basic loadout of weapons and you're good to go. Now, any questions there, Seema? No. Okay. So now you've flown your first mission. Now you've got, you know, say you've traded out to your ships. You got a couple weapons. Now you're good to go. And, and now you're good to go to either fly for conquest or for galactic seasons or both. So let's start there. Um, what, what your objective is in flying each of those. So if you look up your objectives, you look up uh, for galactic seasons, the priority objective is to complete matches complete multiple starfighter matches fly four matches and complete them so this is not win this is not get 10 medals this is not get 20 kills this is fly four matches and complete them uh the daily same thing the daily is complete any one match no problem so if you're just flying for galactic seasons take a ship that you're comfortable with fly that ship get your match done for the day get your weeklies done get comfortable with the ship, learn to fly it a little bit, and you're good to go. Um, that's slightly different than flying for conquest. I don't about know if how long does it take to play one game like that? 10 minutes, 10, 10 to 12, 10, maybe 15 minutes tops to fly yeah. a match. Yeah, they, they, you know, it's, it's, def it, there's only two match types. One is satellite map control. The second is first team to 50 kills wins. Uh, they they might be they might have different scenery. There's a couple uh, different uh, bits of scenery, but those are the only two game types. Neither of them take all that long, and if the other team is really really good, maybe it's going to be done in three minutes. <laughs> so yeah, gotcha. Okay. Uh, but yeah, never never lasts all that long, and I think there's even a, a timeout timer of 15 minutes, maybe 20 tops. So that's that's uh, flying for for galactic seasons. The other reason you might be flying or you might be combining it is to fly for conquest. So here's the conquest objectives and they don't have these same conquest objectives every, uh, every conquest, um, but they do have some really good ones this week as an example. So here, uh, starfighter achiever. If you complete the weekly, you get 125,000 conquest points, uh, conquer the skies, uh, complete a starfighter match at all. Infinitely repeatable, 6,000 conquest points. 
dominate the stars, win a starfighter match, 12,000 conquest points. Here's where it gets interesting. Bomber pilot, gunship pilot, scout pilot, striker pilot. Um, the first time you get to playing five matches with one of those ship types, you get 85,000 conquest points. Here's the trick. So this is, those are the four t uh, ship types, bomber, gunship, scout, and striker. You can fly all four of those ship types in a single match. So in five matches, at the end of your fifth match, you could get another 330, 340,000 conquest points. Or if you're tricky about it, which is what I used to do, is I used to fly four matches with each of those ships and then on four different characters, tick over to the, to the fifth match and get 85,000 on four different characters. So I, I got my conquest target on four different characters. I could do all of this. You, well, if, if, you, if you line it up right, you can do all of this in about six or seven, uh, what, eight, eight matches. So on your fifth, fifth match, sixth match, seventh match, eight, eighth, eighth match. No, you can even do it in fewer matches than that because I used to stagger it. I used to not fly one of the ships for two matches. And uh, let's see, somebody can figure out what the minimum number of matches. You have to fly it five times, um, but you have to, to switch. Anyway, I, I, I had it figured out on, on the side somewhere. Very few matches though, and you can basically get half a you know, pretty close to half a million conquest points. It's a big deal. And that's, that's if you're not even winning. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is when I wanted to do that is I would, I would, I would start, I would always start in my scout cause it's the, it's the fastest ship. And especially when you're doing map control and you're going after the satellite, start in my scout, I zoom out there and I get to the satellite and I cap it because there's getting points for your team there. You cap it by just st standing by, you know, just by hovering by the, or flying around the satellite. Um, so you get there, but maybe you're going to get blown up. Everybody gets blown up all the time. Expect to die. Um, you're already dead. This is the, like an, an, an Eve mindset. You're already dead. You're just waiting for how spectacular the explosion is going to be. Uh, so, you know, ha have fun with that. So I flied my scout out. I would get frustrated if, if, if our team was sort of like outmatching the other team. Cause I might get like halfway through the match and I'm still in my scout and I'm blowing up ships left and right. I'm like, guys, come on, kill me. And then I'll like, like I'll like fly over to their starting area and I'll just like start <laughs> like shooting them all in the middle of them. Come on, bring it, somebody, I'll use, I'll use it once. Come get me. Cause I want to blow up. Cause I got to go to my next ship. Cause I got to get four ships in. <laughs> so I, I, I start with my scout and then I'd usually use to my move to my strike fighter. And then depending on how the match is going, I either do my gunship or my bomber. My bomber is my most relaxing ship to play. Um, uh, my gunship is is also somewhat relaxing, although it's a big target. People like to to, to come and shoot you in the in the gunship. If the other team's really really good, I like to sit back with the gunship and be picking them off and picking off satellites around you know like the little turrets around the satellites. Um, the gun, sh the, the bomber, if I want a relaxing match, especially either one, I'll fly a, I'll fly a bomber in, in a uh, death match and I'll put out a healing, uh, satellite for my teammates. And I'll, I'll set up like a little nest with a, which a bunch of turrets, you know, with like my railgun turret and some mines. And I could, I still have guns on my ship. Anybody comes and tries to dig me out of my hole. I'm still getting plenty of kills. Um, so I'll, Here's side, side tip on deathmatch. In addition to how many kills, the teams with the fewest number of deaths is the team that wins. Uh, uh. So, so you going out there and get tw getting 20 kills while you got killed 30 times means you, you lost the match for your team, even if no one else got any kills. If no one else got any kills and didn't die at all, you lost the match for your team. So there you go. You got to you got to think about that. Your kill to death ratio. So, something tells me that you run into situations where the persons didn't understand that. Yes, maybe. Maybe. And those would be the match that the that matches where Thon would type we in chat <laughs> in ops chat when it's not really going your way. He likes to do that. Um, but yeah, bomber. 
Bomber is a beefy ship that's really good at defense. So for, especially for satellite control, um, I will go and my, my bomber is mastered, which means I have everything unlocked and I have a really good build out, loadout. Um, I use seeker mines, railgun, sentry drone and repair drone. I will dig myself. I will like park myself way tucked way up under the satellite where it's really hard to, to, to get to me. Um, I will have mines. I will, I, I can have three mines out cause I've got everything unlocked and a railgun sentry drone 10, you know, 10 K off of the ship on the side that I'm on. Some, you know, smart guys come to, to try to dig me out of there and they come up underneath me and they try to shoot me. I also have shields and guns. And so now they've gotten shot by the, the turrets on the satellite blown up by my mines. My railgun is railgunning them and I'm facing where I know that they're going to come up from and, and blow them out of the water. I get lots of kills. I get defensive points. I get medals. And if they don't want to come bother me, I still get medals because I'm defending the satellite and get points for that. So then I'll just sit back and I'll just watch the radar. I'll just, you know, I'll just sort of take a relax, take a deep breath, take a sip of my soda. If I see an enemy ship coming in, then I'll be like, hmm. Okay, let me refresh a couple mines here. Wait a minute, though. What kind of soda? <laughs> Seema asking the good questions. <laughs> so pro tip, I only drink sodas without calories. It might not be the, my favorite flavor of soda, but drinking calories, drinking high fructose corn syrup is really bad for your body. Don't do it. So there you go. So I drink Diet Coke. That's that's See, my it was an choice. important question. Yeah, it's very important. Don't drink cal no calories. Don't drink calories in anything but you I, drink. I, I, Unless it's I like milk you or better. juice. I don't even drink the no calorie. Well, so it is water here. I got my got my water bottle. This is number the number one drink that you should shoot. You should drink. You're, you're absolutely I right. I drink water and I drink. Um, I do have one soda I drink called Spendrift, but it doesn't have anything in it but um, tea mm. and a little fruit fruit juice. Oh, I should look that up. I drink. It's really, I really like it. My, I drink water, then coffee, then tea. That's, that's my day. Unless I go out to lunch somewhere, then I'll have a Diet Coke for lunch. And I like a fast food restaurant. Um, Cause I don't like drinking the um, artificial sweeteners that's right. what I, or f all the flavorants and all that. Yes. I mean, I, I eat, don't get me wrong. I eat plenty of stuff that's bad for you, but just in this one little area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, I eat, I eat lots of garbage. I eat can I, <laughs> I like candy, candy and cookies and that kind of stuff. I, I at least pick a day a week where I, where I try to eat no refined sugars. Um, I, I pick at least one day a week where I eat zero meat. Uh, anyway, it's, that's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I should tell you about the trail mix I made today with using Ooh. Jelly Bellies and and the Escape Podcast where we talk about our, our cooking butter techniques. M &Ms. We'll, we'll get to that in the post show. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't click on it up here, but there is a cosmetics tab. Uh, I, like like here, I have the purple. You see, I got the purple engines on my bomber here. You like you like that? That is that does look nice. Yeah, that, that looks pretty sweet. The per, the cosmetics don't don't do all that much, and there aren't that many of them. But there's a few of them, and you can get of them. So I think some of them you can even get off of. Uh, yeah, my lasers are even purple. My laser can you beams. tell if somebody else's <laughs> ship has been customized? It's really hard to, but yes. If you get okay. up close to them, you you can. Um, if you buy a, a cartel ship, I believe it is uh, account wide and mastered. Um, you'll have to double check that though. But yes, I believe if you buy account uh, uh, cartel ships, they are account wide. So like the onslaught here, which is an account ship, which is a cartel ship, um, would unlock for. You might have I don't know. You might have to unlock for all your characters i'm not sure let's let's see what it says you pay just says you pay <laughs> you pay best price purchase no i don't know i don't know for sure so that's a, that's a good question i have not bought any ships uh cartel ships because i just buy my own ships the cart the cartel market ships are copies uh, different cosmetic copies of the same ships that you can get in game so it's not like uh you're getting a, a ship that you can't get in game Okay, so now a, a little bit of tips of, of how to fly. So let's let's take a little bit of time to do that. And to do that, 
uh, I will take you actually into the tutorial. So there's two kinds of tutorials I'm going to recommend. The first tutorial is where you hit the question mark. So you're, you're in your hangar screen, you hit the question mark, and this will take you into a solo tutorial level. I recommend everyone do this so that you can just learn how to control your ship. You can learn how to target things. You can learn how to shoot your weapons. The second thing I would recommend a great, a great way to learn is to get a couple friends to break up into two groups, two, two parties. And then you use PVP challenge mode party to party to challenge each other to a PVP match. But then when you get into that PVP match, and this was what we've done for Guild Knights, when you get into that PVP match, then you have someone who's sort of, t you know, doing the, doing the training say, all right, everybody hit X on your keyboard and stop. Okay, nobody move. We're not gonna shoot each other. We're first gonna learn to fly our ships around. All right, look on the map. Here's satellite C. Everybody fly to that satellite. Okay, now let me show you how to target. You know, so then you can go through, you can stop, you can see what the map looks like. You can see what asteroids look like. You can find out how when your ship gets all upside down to turn it right side up, all while not getting blown out of the sky. A very nice way to, to practice. Uh, tutorial level. I am entering the tutorial level. Uh, am I on my bomber? I think I'm on my bomber. Tutorial level, not bad though. It it's not it's not uh, free flight. It 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 makes you do a couple things, but then it, it sets you it sets you loose. But it launches you in, and then it'll say, um, I think it'll tell you to to do some things. Um, but here, I will hit X to stop my ship. So I can show you some things here on the map. So X stops your ship. There's tip number one. Uh, so you don't have to, uh, if, if you're trying to figure out how to stop your ship. What you've got here on the screen, in the lower left of the screen, um, you've got your, where you can see your ship, your shields, and your power pools. Your shield displays, advanced topic, you can shift shield displays if you get, tr get tricky with some special abilities. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so, you, But that shows you your shield and your health of your ship. Your power pools, semi-advanced topic, uh, default loadout of the keys, keybinds. F1 sends all of your power to your guns. F2 shifts all of your extra power pools to your shields. F3 shifts all of your extra power pools to your engines so you go faster, and F4 sets them back to balanced. Beginner mode, keep them balanced, don't worry about it. More advanced mode, and this is important if you want to get good at GSF, is understanding when and why you would be shifting back and forth between the different power pools. I shift constantly in my ships. Uh, if I'm flying away from somebody, I'll either and you know, I'll I'll shift uh, to have my shields. When I circle back around, if I'm dogfighting and trying to fight them, as soon as they're back into my sight, I wait till they're in my sights. Then I'm shifting back to guns. I'm not wasting. Oh, or if I'm maybe if I'm charging my weapons, I might be shifting back to guns. If they're shooting me, I'm in shields. Or maybe if I if I need my engines because I'm bugging out of somewhere, I will shift. Uh, Often my bomber just stays in with with the shield uh, modes just so I'm very tanky. I've got extra power to shield. So you can see the blue line that just appeared around my shields. That means I have extra power to that shield. Green is is balanced. Um, and if I have all my power to my weapons, then my shields at a, is at my outer shields at a yellow state. Lower right side of the map is your mini map. Your mini map will show you where enemies are, where your friends are. You can only see enemies that are within sensor range, though. Advanced topic would be to look up how long your sensor range is and what passives might extend your sensor range. And if you're in sensor range of one of your friends, who's you can see enemies that are in sensor range of your friend. There are reasons to balance sensor range, but you don't need to worry about it other than there's the mini map. The mini map will also sort of show you where you are in relation to the satellites, right? Ahead of me is a big satellite. That's what's got the A on it over there. And I will, I'll fly over there while, while we're talking here. Um, the top of the screen is the scoreboard. That shows what, you know, what's, what's sort of going on there. Uh, in terms of if it's deathmatch, it's the first team to 50 kills. So it'll say, you know, zero to 50. 
if it's the satellite defense, then I've got you've got A there in the in the middle of the screen. That's satellite A. Uh, use your mouse to steer your ship forward. See, it's it's telling you to do some stuff here. It'll pause your ship so that you can try to yeah ship movement dis disabled. Close the tutorial when to press the space bar and keyboard when you're ready to, when you're ready to move on. In the tutorial mode, it's it's telling you some stuff to do. Um, but yeah, so here it's it's helping you figure out how you you know how you target these things and what it means to to target something. So there's the satellite in front of me. There's a training drone, which would might be an like how an enemy might show up. So it helps you target. You can't shoot anything without targeting it. That's why it's teaching you how to do this. So then in the upper right of the screen is what you're targeting, how far away it is. That's important because some of your weapons only work within a certain range. And then across the bottom of the screen are your abilities. Uh, so I'm in my, I'm in my uh, scout here. My scout has an ability number four, which increases the precision of my shots when I'm shooting something. Number three is my flip turn, which is going to bug me out in the other direction. Number two is a shielding evasion ability. And number one is another uh, damage uh, assault ability. I forgot what it is. Um, I just know that like like I hit one and four. I, I could probably get a little bit better at this myself. Um, I hit one and four when I'm shooting things. And two and three I use as my sort of defensives. Um, three, your, your engine ability, your flip turn, or your bell roll, those break missile lock also. I will hold on to those if I hear, and this is sounds that you can see, and there's icons on the screen, when an enemy is locking onto you, I wait till they're locked to use that ability and break the missile lock because um, that's frustrating to them. And it, it provides me then the extra time to position myself. Anyway, so that's the layout of the screen. Any any questions on, well, I guess not all of the screen, Sima. I didn't talk about these two bars on the sides and this window in the middle. So if you use okay. your mouse, move your mouse around, uh, your mouse needs to be over something you're shooting towards. It's not just the center of your screen. It's where your radical is, is targeting. You need to lead ships. And then the bars on the side are your power for your engines and your power for your weapons. If your weapons run out of power, you can't shoot anything. You have to wait for them to charge up. If your engines run out of power, then you can't use your engine's ability, which is like your space bar. You can see how that's draining the purple bar. Um, if that goes down to zero, then you can't use your speed boost anymore but you can use your throttle. The, the outside of the purple bar is one extra little set of bars. That's your throttle. Hitting W gets you to maximum throttle. Hitting nothing gets you to two thirds throttle. Hitting S gets you to one third throttle. And hitting X gets you to zero throttle and stops your ship. All right, now question, Seema. I know you got, I know you got questions. <laughs> well, I just want to say those meteors are really pretty. They are. The environments are really cool. That's another reason to just go out with friends and check out the environments. Um, because then you can like, you, you can see some of these structures. There's like, the, this is a shipyard, remember? So there's a, there's a half-built Imperial destroyer down here, which is kind of cool to, to check out. Um, it might also give you some ideas if you're a bomber and you're in a death match and you want a nice place to hide out. Well, look, there's like the shielded, there's the shielded area. What if I was in my bomber and I, I put a bunch of mines right up in here and a heel turret for my, for my friends. And I tucked myself right up into this corner, way up here, Morty. I love to park my bomber right here. And I put a miss, I put my railgun turret right in the middle. And anybody who comes in, in here to come after me, they die. <laughs> um, oftentimes I will also uh, stop right here to drop my missile turret so it's actually outside the shield so it can shoot people coming towards me um, when you drop a turret a mine or a, a, a missile turret off of your bomber it, it floats out behind you a little bit so you want to point your butt out towards where you want the, the mine or the missile to go there's another pro tip for you so if, if I'm over parking uh, and trying to put like my uh, repair turret um, underneath the, the satellite, I park, I park under the turret and then I turn so my butt is up into the turret. 
because you don't want those repair satellites to be floating out in, in you know, floating out by themselves because people with their gunships, they'll, they'll blow them up right away. So I tuck the repair turret way up, way up under the, uh, under the satellite, way up under here. Like this. Then I turn down so my butt is towards where I want it to go. And then I pop out my little repair turret. Good job. So now here I'm by the turret. You see these green um, glowing pulsing around my ship in the middle yeah. of the screen. That's telling me that I am, um, I am capping the turret. So in the match oh. where you have turrets to cap, that's what caps the turret. You can't cap the turret. You can't like capture the turret for your team unless you have at least one more team member than any of the other team at the at the site of the turret within the, the 10K meters or the 5K meters of the, I think it's 5K of the turret and all of the defense turrets if the enemy, if the enemy has them. Um, the defense turrets need to be blown up. But then you'll start to see that green, and then your team will capture the turret. The three little dots at the top of the screen above the A in the in the sh show you how many of these defense turrets are around um, the enemy turrets. All right, so that's, that's that. Uh, let's talk about basic controls. As I said, um, your throttle. I'm, I'm holding down W for most of the time and then tapping spacebar, which is my thrust. If you ever get, um, I, I, t I use A and D to, to rotate my ship like this if I wanna, if I wanna spin around, um, which, which you might want to from time to time, because uh, there's, in, in certain times, it's, it's easy to, uh, in, in certain ways, it's easier to uh, maneuver or turn depending on the orientation of your ship. Um, and where you're going, like around a target, for example. Oh, I just got kicked out of the. Uh, there's a timer on the tutorial. That's another reason to just get into a match with your friends. Uh, missile turret over railgun. Is it just your preference? Um, yes. Uh, I think the general consensus is that the railgun does slightly higher damage, has a faster lock, not a faster lock on time necessarily, but longer range, um, uh, definitely over missile turret. Uh, missile turret also, um, oops, get out of that. What did I just do? Oh, I did the, t I did the, yeah, okay. I almost thought I queued into a match. Did not. Um, but that's, that's an advanced topic, which should you have like a rail gun turret over a, a missile turret for your bomber. Um, you can read the guides like Volk's guides. Um, that'll give you some details on why you might want one or one over the other. So here's another Im important topic. Here's this training drone that I could shoot, right? Couple things. You need to be in range of a target to shoot it. So here you can see it says 2,700 meters. Most of your guns are in the five to 6,000 meter range, 4,500 to 6,500. Uh, most of your missile locks are in the 4,500 to maybe 7K range. There's, there's long range photon torpedoes that might be at 10K. Uh, you need to be in range for one, and you need to hit E. There's a couple other ways to, to target things. Like you can um, you can target the last thing that that shot you. I think by hitting R. Um, I do it sort of my muscle memory. I think that's R. But you need to target something. So it needs to be in the upper right of your screen as a target to be able to shoot anything. Um, so it's not it's not 100 true. There's there's ways for like uh, rocket pods on some of the some of the, the the, the fighters to, to hit things that you're not targeting, but for the most part, hit E, target something. You can't shoot, you can't lock, miss a lock anything unless you're targeting it. So target something. That's that's something that frustrates people when they first get into GSF. They're flying their their ship around. They're like, I'm I'm facing I'm facing right at this thing and I'm shooting and shooting and it's not doing anything. Oh, you didn't target it. Okay, so now I have this thing targeted. My left mouse button. That's that's my guns. My right mouse button on this is missile lock. You saw it was slowly was was locking in, and there was a sound that you probably heard. I I hold I did down. Hear it. I hold down to, to to lock the missile, and then when I release my right mouse button, that's when it releases the missile that I have locked to shoot it. Uh, a couple things with missiles, people. 
can break out of your missile lock. People can go around the corner around an asteroid to break to get out of line of sight, which will break your missile lock. Uh, you want to missile lock quick and then release your missiles. Um, another pro tip, though, is you can be shooting your guns while you're locking your missiles. So here, I will start locking the missile. Oops. Stop. And that's not letting me shoot this. Oh, I don't have it targeted. There you go. Why could I not lock the, this target? Because I didn't have it targeted. I didn't press E. I'm always sort of like tapping E depending on how I'm picking targets when I'm when I'm flying in my match. So here I will start sh I will start the missile lock and then start shooting at the same time. So there, before I even could release my missile, I blew up the target. So there's another pro tip. Um, there are, if you have rocket pods, is a, is a special kind of like missile that only shoots straight and it doesn't lock on. That's another advanced topic. So read the descriptions in Vulk if you want sort of advanced to topic. But for the most part, it's button on the left is your missiles. Button on the right is your, uh, or button on the left is your guns. Button on the right is your secondary weapon, which in some cases, like on my bomber, that's dropping a, a mine. Uh, but on my my missiles, my ships with missiles, that's firing a missile and locking on. Um, here we'll do, we'll hit number three on my keyboard. That flips me around and jets me off in the opposite direction and breaks missile lock. Number two, puts an evasion shield around my ship. You want to be using those abilities from time to time. More advanced topics to worry about is you might have two different kinds of guns as your primary missile, as your primary weapon. You might have like burst lasers and um, and heavy heavy lasers. Burst lasers only work up close. Uh, heavy lasers work from further away. So you might have reason to be switching off between those. In those cases, your number one key will be switching off between your two primary weapons. So a couple Is more advanced range? things to, to go after and think about. Indicator that tells you if you're close enough to use one attack over the other? Um, yes, there are a couple ways that you will notice that. You will notice it by, uh, and you sort of have to get used to it, by um, the reticle that, that you're looking at. So see the, the, the gray circle around that training drone? That is because I am not in range of that training drone for either oh, of I my see. missiles okay. Okay. or my guns. When I get close enough into missile range and here at about 5,000 meters, you'll see it turns red. So now that's a visual indicator for one. For two, in the upper right and under the, the target on my screen, it says how far it is, 2,500 meters. That's important right. as well. Yeah. Uh, gunships are great. Gunships shoot at 15,000 meters. So 15K out. 10K? 10K. 10K out. 10K, 15K. Uh, now I've forgotten. See, <laughs> I only know it when but, I'm in when I'm in the match. But right, far away, right. and so you want to be far away, and you want to stop. It's it's 15k, isn't it, chat room? It's 15k. Yes, it is 15k. You want to stop at an optimal place where you're sort of tucked out of the way. People, yeah, thank you, Forster. Um, sort of tucked out of the way, but maybe you're at about 13k away from like the center point of where the enemy ships are flying around. So they'll they'll stay within 15k when they go behind the target. Uh, so you want to you want to find those sweet spots to hide your ship. Take a couple shots, blow a ship, couple ships up, and then go find another spot because they're going to come after you. Sorry, you were you were you were saying something, Zima? No, no, I was no, I was just saying. Oh, because you could remember between 10k and 15k yeah. because when you're in the game you just notice the visual indicators that you're yep. close enough. And um, now, now when I, in, in, when I envision myself in my gunship, it's 15 K because I, because I'm always watching, you know, who's at like 14 K and are they coming, you know, are they dipping in, out to 17 K? Cause that's a pain. I'll tuck my gunship in a little bit closer to make sure I'm in range, even when they're, when they're zooming out. Cause if it's too easy for them to get out of range of you, you'll take a shot and then they'll just go out and, and their shields will heal up and you won't be able to shoot them. You want to be able to finish them off. All right, we've been talking for quite a bit. Um, this this wasn't going to be exhaustive, but hopefully this is enough to, to sort of uh, get started. Um, there's advanced topics. My favorite ship to, to, to fly for that first match when I have nothing unlocked and I can do, you know, I can... 
in a, in rare cases, I can even top top do top damage on a team. I'm not going to do as good as somebody who's who's really in there flying, but I can easily do 25k damage if I'm having a good match. Is a gunship, the vanilla gunship, completely you know no unlocks, no nothing. Go into a gunship, just put on your slug rail gun, um, find some sweet sweet spots to 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 pick away at at enemy targets. You can do 20k damage. Um, in a level with a level one character, your first match completely f- fresh out of the out of the gate gunship, and you can be contributing and you can you can be having a good time. All right, um, yeah, lots of other details. We can have some advanced discussion in the future if if anyone out there wants to come join a a guild training session where we go into a match and we do team versus team. Happy to set up another one of those for the, yeah. the guilds. Let us know. Tonight. Yeah, because we could set it up. Um, and by we, I mean someone else. Yeah. But uh, it's it's not as hard as it looks, um, but it's not easy. The muscle memory of just flying your ship around, getting good, good at like fly, you know flying close to asteroids and flying around, and you know if I'm if I'm flying close to another ship and I I want to like dogfight with them, I'll be playing with my throttle constantly and like flying slow so that they'll fly by me. And there's lots of little like trick tricks like that. Places where to hide on various ma- maps. Um, m- different abilities that do different things. If my if my ship if I get really confused because my ship's upside down, you can hold down V and it slowly turns your ship level to the plane of the map. You know, little little things like that we can get into at some point in in some of these matches. Um, but hopefully that's that's a little bit of a refresher, how you do it for Galactic Seasons, how you do it for Conquest, um, why you would do it, why you would trade off ships, get a bunch of points, get your Galactic Seasons done, two thumbs up, and you'll be contributing to maps and, and ships, and you'll be topping the charts, and you'll have your Flyboy title or your, your whatever your your title is in no time. All right, I th- I think with that, I know it was mostly me talking tonight, Seema. Um, um, well, we planned. We knew that was going to happen. Yeah, we knew that was going to happen. Because I don't have a lot to contribute to GSF. I, I can say that I agree. It's a learning curve. And while I'm tolerant of a long learning curve in many settings, just not this one, for, well, for whatever it's, reason. It's just well, especially small. because the learning curve in this is while while you're trying to figure something out. people are shooting you. People are like shooting you in the face. It's That's con- true. It can be but, you know, really frustrating. We went on a guild night and people, well, some people were still shooting me in the face. <laughs> that, That's just how it is. But even in that sort of no pressure thing, I still was like, ah, this is not for me. It is It is a high high learning curve, just control. Just control of your ship. Yeah, um, to, stopping to get- and starting. And, and even knowing where you are, and, you know, people say, come over here, Seema. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, where, I don't where, know where, where you I are. Even, I don't even know where you are or what the maps look like or how I would even find out what you mean by come over here. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. it. I my, my comment is typically it takes at least a dozen matches. Oh, see, I just yeah. Into a... I, I totally think in my case it would take 24, but still it, it's not that it's impossible. It would it would be possible. But, yeah, I mean, I, so my 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 guidance for anyone else out there is if you do want to give it a shot, you kind of got to fly a dozen matches to, to yeah. see if you, if you're getting the feel for it and then you will start to notice where you're at. All right. With that, we can take our EPC 390 droid and kick them out an airlock into the quad drive yards and uh, so that they can float around and broadcast this podcast to all of you out there. For podcast links and to see when the podcast goes live, like it went live early tonight, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Max the Gray. And if you know anybody that should be playing the game or joining us tomorrow night for Mega or joining us next week in all of our games for all of the fun stuff that we're going to do for our Summer of Love and our Remembrance Day and our Guild Town Hall, have them come find us at AIE-Guild.org. Upper right on AIE-Guild.org is our Guild Discord link. It's open to everyone. Come in there. You can see our SWOTOR channel. You can get an invite to our guild in SWOTOR on the Republic or the Imperial side of Starforge. That's our server, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or yes, come is. play any of the other games. Come join us in the beta for, for New World in between your, your PvP, your GSF matches. And with that, 
uh, with that, we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone.